Having surfed the highway, hit the road, saved the world, and conquered space and time, you'd think that the world would have just about run out of thrills for a stoic detective dog and maniacal, hyperkinetic rabbity thingy. But if we've learned anything from Sam and Max's illustrious 30-year career, it's to never underestimate the freelance police. Not when it comes to fighting crime, and especially not when it comes to off-the-wall entertainment. With Sam and Max, The Devil's Playhouse, the third season of Telltale's episodic adventures having just hit digital distributors, we thought we'd take this chance to offer a retrospective look at the life and times of these anthropomorphic Avengers and what makes them tick. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I would do my own comics. I had like Super Stooge and things like that. I would do like superhero parodies and stuff like that. And my kid brother, he was doing uh, these detective characters and they were called Sam and Max and they were a dog and a rabbit. He would leave his unfinished comics lying around in the house and um, as a typical mean older brother I'd take his comics and I would, if he hadn't finished the story, I'd finish it out in a parody of his style. And so I'd have the characters kind of over explaining everything they did and they would kind of make fun of the way they were drawn and I would draw their hand you know, with the thumb on the wrong side and the perspective wrong and, and everything I could think of to make him irritated. And, Ultimately, the, that kind of developed into their own style of relating to each other, and he lost interest in the characters, and one year for my birthday, he gave me a little document that said I could have the characters from that point on, and, uh, and I ended up doing my own stories with those characters. And uh, once I got to art school, and I actually had to you know, do them in a, in a figured out style for the first time when I was doing the, the school paper strip. During the 80s, there was kind of a black and white comics boom, and a friend of mine was doing a comic called Fish Police and was having a successful time, you know, publishing his own book and wanted to do a second title. He had seen a few of my Sam and Max strips and asked me if I wanted to do a, a full comic, and so I thought about it, and I had never done more than a few pages of them at a time, and so I ended up taking about four months and drawing the one Sam and Max comic, in case I never had a chance to do another one, I just put everything I could into it and had a great time and had a chance to do a couple more after that for different publishers. Following Sam and Max's initial run at Fish Rap Studios, Steve sought work as a freelance artist, taking illustration jobs at Marvel, Fantagraphics, and First Comics, drawing pre-established characters in ongoing series. But it was in 1988 when Steve answered an ad at LucasArts that his oddball crime fighters began to edge themselves back into the spotlight. It was shortly after I had done my first Sam and Max comic and a friend of mine that I knew from the, the comic convention circuit had, had seen it and knew that uh, at LucasArts they were looking for artists that they could train to work on the computer to do game art. So they figured it was easier to train somebody that could draw to use a computer rather than train a computer guy to, to draw. So a few of us went up there to uh, interview and I ended up uh, getting hired right away to work on a game that was immediately canceled about a week after I was hired. So I went home and then got another call from them and came back. The first assignment I had was to paint the cover for Zach McCracken, which was great. And then that rolled me into doing game art for, I believe the first game was uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I did backgrounds and animation for, and then right after that, Monkey Island. The point-and-click adventure genre was in its infancy, and Steve found himself playing an active part in its creation, working on art for classic titles like Loom and Maniac Mansion. As Steve flourished at Lucas, his comic book creations found a new audience with the company's staff, earning cameos in various LucasArts titles and even given a full-page color comic strip in the monthly LucasArts newsletter, The Adventurer. They had asked me if I was interested in doing a strip for The, for the Adventurer, and the only way I was interested enough to be excited about it was if I could do my own characters, and so I kind of put out the idea of doing Sam and Max and and that was a lot of fun because I got to kind of parody whatever game was coming out but what was going on with Sam and Max is that people within the company sort of knew them already from the comics and uh, they sort of were like unofficial mascots in the in the game company and in fact there were even little animated versions of them very similar to what the the models looked like for Hit the Road, and those were used by the by the programmers to train, you know, using the SCUM system. I'm a comic book guy, a reader, you know, fan. I had a little knowledge of the characters coming into the company uh, when I first joined, 
uh, and instantly got a lot more exposure to them because they were everywhere. They were in the uh, training tools for our uh, uh, development tools at the time, and of course, Steve Purcell worked there. So, you know, we were pretty much soaking in it pretty quickly. Um, so I knew a lot about them. The uh, boss, uh, my boss over at LucasArts at the time, after a couple of games we were trying to start up didn't come together, uh, took me and Sean Clark out to a bar and said, you know, we really like these Sam and Max characters that we keep using around the office. Let's build a game out of them. And that's pretty much how it came to be, and you guys run it. <laughs> and so at one point, when it was time to do a new game, um, Kelly Flock, the president at the time, came to me and asked me if I would license Sam and Max to, to LucasArts to make a game out of them. And I was amazed that, uh, that a George Lucas company was coming to me to uh, license something that I made. <laughs>